Hi everyone, this is Danielle Martin. I'm the Knowledge Manager here at the Intel Computer Clubhouse Network. Um, we are excited about the next round of Start Making at Clubhouse starting um, this year in 2015. Uh, and we've been having a series of live hangouts to help you guys get kicked off and started. And the first one last week, um, we are also excited about using a new platform from MIT called Unhangout. And we're learning how to use it as we go along. So the original broadcast recording had some technical difficulties, including some of the slides weren't showing through. So this is our effort to be clearer about getting information out to you by re-recording that intro part. And then we're going to cut back to some of the greater parts of that broadcast, which included Julie Raymold from SRA International walking through the evaluation and program monitoring tools. Uh, so with me today, this is another experiment about pre-recording uh, Hangout with not a lot of folks on it. Um, so my idea today was to give the little presentation to my coworker, Marco Vieira, who is our new technology manager here at the Computer Clubhouse Network. Um, and he is new to lots of things, including what uh, making at Clubhouses is. So I thought he might be a good audience, like some of the new coordinators, our new host organizational reps that um, are may have written the proposal, you know, who knows what you remember back from December of 2014, um, but he might be a good audience, and so he's going to kind of quipe in uh, with questions uh, from a new perspective. Uh, but I wanted to walk through today with you guys, just sort of setting the expectations about what we're going to be doing uh, between now and uh, January, or I'm sorry, June 15th, um, which is the end of this program cycle. So I've got some slides and a presentation. Marco's going to show them on the screen while I'm talking. Um, it sort of walk through a little bit about where we're at. So just to give you the really quick rundown about where we started, uh, the Making at Clubhouses initiative um, is something that came started back in 2013 with Intel coming to us and saying, really, we want Clubhouses to be more well known as um, makerspaces. Um, so, and Mitch Resnick, who's the founder of the Computer Clubhouse, got up on annual conference and during his plenary and said, you know what, clubhouses don't need to be converted into makerspaces, they already are. Um, and these things you'll see here, you know, us being about relationships, we're, you know, using a variety of high-tech and low-tech tools, um, and we facilitate interest-based design activities that encourage people to have fun while it's still being hard and using a design cycle much like they do with the MIT Media Lab around designing, drafting, and demoing, um, and it all being connected through a peer-supported international network. Um, so the idea was, and a lot of the research was showing that girls, especially ages 10 to uh, 14 or 15, um, weren't that interested in going into STEM, science, technology, education, math careers. Um, so Intel decided that we wanted to pilot really targeting specifically that population with some of the making activities from the Make Magazine slash Make Culture that do Maker Fair um, and all that kind of stuff. So um, we did some pilots in five different clubhouses in the U.S., including here at the Flagship Computer Clubhouse in Boston um, with groups of girls. Um, and that first curriculum was a set of activities that you would do with the same group of girls cumulatively. Uh, so you would do paper circuits with lights, and then, you know, a banana piano with Makey Makey, and then hacking an art bot, and maybe some sewn circuits that leads into an open activity. Um, and all of that was using facilitation techniques that were adapted from the PBS SciGirls um, 7, and uh, Maker Education Initiative had done a day for teachers about how to bring this into schools in an interesting way. Um, so that was wildly successful, um, and Intel really liked the idea of maybe this was a way to kickstart more making activities in clubhouses. Um, so we developed a guide with MIT Media Lab and the Lifelong Kindergarten Group, uh, specifically Alicia Pajwani, um, who's my cohort in crime, um, around what does it look like for a set of activities exactly at a clubhouse and and to run a specific program to do this. So the idea that we started and gave out um, mini grants last year in this round that you guys are in this year is that you are going to try a set of activities. Um, and in some ways, it doesn't feel super clubhouse-y uh, because it's not designed to be during drop-in time. It's really designed to recruit a group of um, youth 
Um, and we heard back from most of the clubhouses that it didn't need to just be about girls, that boys were just as interested in getting involved with this. Um, but we did want to start to think about how to get people on the pathway into STEM thinking and interest early. So that's why we still say you do it with 10 to 15 year olds. Um, and you work with the same group of 15 to 20 kids. Um, and we developed a set of four to six activities um, that we tested a little bit here. Um, and those all came from the same kind of learning models and remixed things that came out of the Art of Tinkering book that came out of the Exploratorium in San Francisco. Um, the new work that Mitch and his team are doing with the creative learning and the four P's. Um, and you know, going back to the make education and also our roots here at the museum around um, engineering is elementary and how to bring engineering into other subjects. Um, so the creative competencies that we're trying to show with this and that and what that is is the youth outcomes is that the youth identify as a creator they show creative competence uh, confidence right they understand what's happening they persist through failure um, they understand the tools and they express interest in those tools and they express an awareness of STEM and the arts which is the A in the STEAM um, and then they also really do this by collaborating and mentoring together so the activities, you know, really this is a slide around like how you self-identify as a maker, but the activities really build, and I think that's a really important thing about what we're asking you guys to do is you don't have to do all six activities that are in the Start Making Guide. You do need to do start with something simple and then build upon a concept. And so we ask that you try at least a few of the activities from the guide because we're trying to test if these are good or not. Um, and then if you find something else that's cooler or more interesting to your kids or in your environment or works with materials that you can get your hands on, um, we want you to document those as well. Um, but all of these in this progression uh, build upon electronic circuits. You understand what a circuit is by just very simply, you know, putting a light on a battery in the beginning, and then you build up to more complicated or you know, complex circuits using different materials like soft conductive thread, um, or you work on robots, or you make your own robot by uh, hacking open a toothbrush, um, or you think about how to get from 2D to 3D, um, and think about how to understand going from shape to form. So. A typical session, we also let you guys figure out what works at your clubhouse. So some of those guys in 2014, they ran it as a two-day, full-day, nine-to-five camp. They, some of them ran it as a five-day sign-up summer camp that maybe some shorter time with some longer breaks in between to like go run around and come back. Um, some folks that did it during more of your school-based programming did it as once a week for two hours later at night. Some folks did it, uh, they open on Saturday or a day they're not usually open and gave a little bit more time. So when we ran it here at the flagship, she did four Saturdays where there was a two to three hour focus time and then they hung out during regular clubhouse hours on Saturday to keep working on their projects. Um, but all of them, all of the sessions sort of had the same flow of everybody doing an activity together as a group and then iterating it on their own or in small pairs and really integrating a lot of the things that we always do with the clubhouse around showing it off to each other, building a buzz, and then sharing and reflecting. And then at the end of all these, it culminates in the kids really sort of thinking about how can I make something with all the things that I've learned that was really interesting to me. Um, and that is what usually shows up when we do a, you know, share a, a big showcase at the end. And that's the last thing we're sort of asking you guys. So here's basically what I just said, what we're asking you guys to do. And your local context, what works for you, you are going to go and recruit and sign up 15 to 20 youth, ages 10 to 15. Um, they can be new members that haven't done these kind of activities before or have only done them a few times, uh, but not in a group setting. Or it could be a way for you to recruit new members. So some of the clubhouses really were trying to bring in more girls, and they thought the making activities would be really exciting to them. So they recruited new members to come and start with Start Making. Um, and then the idea is you work with that same group of kids. So it's not like you just have an open house at start making time and any kids kind of come and go in this framework. It's that same group over time because part of what we learned from um, remixing some of those other curriculums, especially the Psy Girls, is that girls and, and I think any kid really are attracted by the relationships that they build over time. Um, and not just with the mentors that you're hoping to recruit, but also with the materials. Um, so if they do a paper circuit and they have a lot of success, they want to do another circuit in a different medium like a sewn 
place. Um, and so that's why we ask you to do at least four to six sessions with the same group. Um, and then also an element of we're hoping you guys use this as a way to build capacity around recruiting um, volunteers. So you can be engaging um, some volunteers that happened with us that had already been engaged at Clubhouse but wanted to learn a new technology. So they wanted to learn side by side with the kids, which was great. Um, or you can go out um, and we have some connections with the Make community around people that want to come in and just need there's something they're interested in, like building circuits or robots, and you can have them come in as a mentor for this. And then the last couple of things um, is that it does, we want you to lead up to some sort of showcase where the kids are showing off their projects and demoing it. Um, and whether that be just for their parents or their guardians um, or other staff at the clubhouse or whether some folks are actually um, opening it up and, and hosting very small local maker fair like community things where they're actually having other people come in to show next to the kids. Um, and then the other thing that we're going to get more detailed into with Julie in that part of this broadcast is there's some evaluation tools and we tried really hard um, to make them not just around like the assessment and planning reports, not just around documenting for the sake of you know creating bureaucracy, but really to help you as you go along. So that progress report tool is something we're going to ask you guys right now before September, for, uh, I'm sorry, before February 1st to log in and put the initial information including who's your lead and what kind of format of program design you think you're going to do um, right away. And then as you go along, document each session in there, document who, what kids show up to what session and some success stories and some project examples as you go along. Um, and then during the second to last session, you want the kids to do an online survey, um, which you need to have parents have a release signed before they can take the survey. Um, and then there's some optional pieces down here, um, including we're working on um, with MIT around building progress around portfolio, project portfolios, and an online tool for that, which integrates really nicely with the village. Um, and we really wanted to make this as, you know, as as simple as possible. So we heard definitely that some folks like you do have natural, you know, if you're trying to work with the same group of kids, kids drop off. Um, but if you just have kids sign in and want to give us, you know, a paper version of your attendance roster to show that the breadth of all the kids that you touched, even though the final sessions you might have a, a little bit of smaller group, um, that's what some of these optional things are about as well. So. Yeah, so we're going to go back, and I think the last thing I'm going to say on this recording is that um, if you, you know, the place to always go is the facilitation manual page on the village. Um, and that's a space where we're continuing to update that page as we go along um, with what's most important on the top, but sort of document on the bottom what's happening. Um, so that's a place where you can link off of and go to the progress report tool and it has the login information for that. It has the link directly to the youth pages um, and it also uh, has a flow of the dates over time between now. So I think the other thing I'm going to leave you with um, is to sort of think about when you're thinking about how you're going to design your own program locally is that your implementation deadline is May 31st and then we give you a couple more weeks to get the, uh, the program monitoring and documentation stuff in by uh, June 15th. Um, but you have between when you get the check and May 31st to run it in any way that works for your organization. Um, so I think that is pretty much everything I wanted to say. Um, I think <laughs> I'm wondering if there's enough space and not putting Marco too much on the spot. If there's anything that I said that wasn't clear or if he has any sort of like pressing questions as being new to this that he thinks it might be sort of interesting. And what I think I might do because we're sort of testing. Oh, wait. We've got two laptops setting here. So the intention is um, that I actually didn't talk about this, but um, we're going to be doing some um, virtual trainings because we can't do an in-person training. Um, so a lot of this we did last year at annual conference, but that's too late for the your program by being done by May 31st. So um, those are going to be a series of weekly hangouts um, where we're going to broadcast some information like this and then have some more uh, subgroups because we're in 12 different time zones in this second group um, where folks can kind of more one-on-one -on -one, uh, talk to each other. And um, a lot of that is trying the activities first um, before you have to get in front of the kids and do them. Because I think that's what we heard about a lot um, for folks that aren't super into making um, already, that the best way to learn that is to try it first, either by yourself um, or with the group of other mentors that are going to be doing it with the kids. So we're going to try to facilitate that um, on a weekly on Hangout in February. So, yeah, I want to 
sort of say to Marco, how'd I do? <laughs> and if there's great. anything, like, <laughs> usually, especially as somebody that's new to clubhouses and new to the network, that... Um, um, mainly, you have a question about. I thought that um, when I was listening to it, um, I was wondering, uh, as far as that culminating piece at the end, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if, like, the like if the clubhouses can do it all together, like if they did one presentation where they were sharing um, mm. things together, like it, it, like would do, like there were presentations that they, like they could say, look at what we did, show it to their families, but I wondered if they could share it, how they could share it between the, the different clubhouses. Well, one thing is that we want you to post as you go along. In the progress report, it does prompt you to go in and put up some of the youth projects. So you could use the village as a meeting space where you encourage the kids mm -hmm. to not only post their own projects but then go when you put them in there there's a start making gallery and so encourage them to go look and there's a ton in there now from the first round um, so you can encourage them to go in and comment on the other kids projects that way um, nice. in a more virtual way um, we do have some guy I don't think we have many that are happening anywhere geographically close where they could show up at each other we've got two that are going to be running in Boston um, so they could show up um, together. But you could also use this platform of UnHangout or Google Hangout. We've been testing that a bit with the village talks around clubhouse to clubhouse connection. So you could sort of look at the map and see if someone's in your time zone and have the kids actually get on Hangout together um, as well. But I think this show and share is really powerful, especially what I heard from the first round um, of people is that <sighs> to like a lot of really interesting stuff happens in the room when all the girls are sitting or, or boys are sitting there together doing these activities and when they have to get up and show their parents or show someone that wasn't there the whole time um, they get a really great chance to show what they learned and yeah. test some of the creative competencies but also you know show some pride in the work that they did. Awesome, thank you. Cool, alright, so anything else? Like, you're like, oh my god, I can't imagine. That was the main thing. That came <laughs> I, I loved most of the activities, I think, were really cool as far as the, um, the circuitry, and mm. I think that that's going to be a really cool thing to, to see. Yeah, and that's what I heard from the original broadcast, is people really want to dive into this, and so, I mean, uh, I will say that the whole guide is up right now as a PDF. We're not going to be able to send you guys printed copies this time around, um, but... Um, you could download it right now and start trying out the activities. The uh, materials list is also up, and if you think you're going to start early in February, you do want to get on and start buying some of that stuff. Um, and we'll coach you and help you as, as best as we can. Um, there are some very specific things that are much easier to get on the internet on the materials list, like the copper tape and the batteries and the lights. Um, and we definitely, you know, part of why we gave you the just a blanket grant of $5,000 and we said to break it down between $2,000 for participant support, $2,000 um, for just being host and figuring out transportation and, um, you know, a, a $1,000 for the organization, um, is that, you know, some clubhouses were, e were able to buy that stuff ch so much cheaper locally and they had a lot of money for other things. Um, some folks, it, I had to send copper tape to South Africa, and so we have to sort of figure that out. So the early you can dive into that, and a lot of people found that to be one of the challenging things. So all of this stuff, I know it's a lot of information, um, and all of this stuff is on the Village page, and we're trying the best we can to give you it in chunks as best as we can. Um, and, you know, and I will apologize because I think the other great but also interesting challenge of the second group is so many of you guys are our international clubhouses, so we have more languages. Um, a lot of the tools are only just in English and Spanish right now, but um, so we understand and I think part of this is jumping into this with us and seeing it's not just take this thing and do exactly what we tell you, but do what works for you um, and tell us how that worked and document it. And that's really what I think my goal with this whole initiative was that Clubhouse is already making or just need a little bit of a, a support, you know, how to buy the materials and, and figure out how to get started and talk about it with people but you guys already make all the time you just were calling it making so um, I think that's a, a great way so I think we're gonna stop so we can make this the shortest broadcast possible um, but if you guys have any questions you know how to contact me by email um, we're doing another recast um, tonight and we're gonna play this video so I guess this will be live then um, but um, yeah Stay tuned for when we actually schedule the time, but starting the first week of February, we'll start those trainings. So thank you, Marco, for going on this journey with me. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right.